Hey YouTube, thanks for visiting my channel. In this problem, we're going to prove that the sequence of functions converges pointwise on the interval 0, 1. Before we do the proof, let's recall what it means for a sequence of functions to converge pointwise. I'll squeeze it in up here at the top. So we will say that f sub n converges to f pointwise if for every epsilon greater than 0, and for every x in our, our domain, in this case the domain of the functions, is 0, 1. We can find some positive integer such that for all little n bigger than big N, the distance between f sub n of x and f of x can be made small. How small? Less than epsilon. So that's what it means for a sequence of functions to converge pointwise on an interval. So in this problem, we're going to prove it for this case. So before we do the proof, we actually have to figure out the proof. So that's the scratch work. So let's go ahead and figure out the proof. So the sequence has to converge in this set, OK? So let's consider different cases. So like if x is 0, let's think about what happens to our functions we look at f sub n of 0. Right, you just plug in 0 to your sequence. And so you get 0 to the n, and that's just going to be 0. So this should converge to 0 as n approaches infinity. And in the proof, what's going to happen is we're going to have f sub n of 0 minus, and we're saying it converges to 0, so minus 0. Well, we know f sub n of 0 is 0, so we'll just get 0 minus 0, which is 0. And that will be less than epsilon in the proof. Right? So it, it should work out really, really easily. If x equals 1, we look at f sub n of 1. And that's 1 to the n, which is 1. And as n approaches infinity, right, this will approach 1. So in our proof, we'll have f sub n of 1. And our limit should be 1, so minus 1. So this is 1 minus 1 which is 0, which will be less than epsilon. So both of these cases will be very easy to deal with when we actually go to our proof. The difficult case, or the more challenging case, is the case when x is strictly between 0 and 1. So if this is the case, then f sub n of x is simply x to the n. And whenever you have a number that's strictly between 0 and 1, and you're raising it to a power, that number gets smaller and smaller and smaller the bigger the power gets. So eventually that number gets really, really close to zero. So as n approaches infinity, this should approach zero. So our limit in this case is going to be zero again. So in our proof, we'll have f sub n of x minus zero, which is x to the n minus zero, which is the absolute value of x to the n. And we somehow have to show that this is less than epsilon. OK, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we can drop the absolute value, and the reason is x is between 0 and 1. OK, so it's already positive, so this is x to the n. And we want this to be less than epsilon. So if you look back, let me scroll up so you see it. If you look here, we need to find uh, a natural number n. In these first two cases, I don't even think I mentioned it, but this will work independent of n, both of these cases, x equals 0 and x equals 1. So this is super easy, and we'll just mention it in the proof. But in this case, we'll actually have to find an n. Uh, so to do that, let's go ahead and solve uh, this inequality for little n. So n is in the exponent. So the natural way to do that is maybe take the natural log of both sides. So ln x to the n less than ln epsilon. Then you can use the power rule for logs to bring down the n. So you get n ln x less than ln epsilon. And then we can solve for little n by dividing by the natural log of x. And when you divide by the natural log of x, well, first notice a couple things. One, it makes sense because x is not 1, so you're not dividing by 0. The other thing that's worth noting is that the graph of the natural log is special, right? It's got a vertical asymptote at 0, and it passes through 1, 
and it looks like this. So our X is, use a different color so you can see, our X is in this green region here on the graph. So X is between 0 and 1. So the natural log of X is negative, it's less than 0. So we, when we divide by the natural log of X, we actually have to reverse the inequality. So this will become N greater than the natural log of epsilon over the natural log of X. Now, we have to find a positive integer greater than this. We can do that using something called the Archimedean property. It's usually studied at the beginning of like a, an advanced calculus course. It says that whenever you have a real number, you can always find a natural number that's bigger. So we'll choose, so we'll choose big N to be bigger than the natural log of epsilon over the natural log of x, right? We can use the Archimedean property um, to do that in the proof. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the proof uh, carefully. So proof. So let me scroll back up to the definition so you see it. So you always start the proof by taking an epsilon greater than zero and an x in your interval. So we will say let epsilon be greater than zero and take an x in the interval. So let's take cases. So if, let's say if x is zero. Well, if x is zero, we know that fn of zero is zero. So take any n, take any, take any positive integer. doesn't matter which one, right? Because we have to show the existence of capital N, right? You have to show that there is a capital N such that this condition is true. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. So we'll just take any capital N. Then for any little n, it doesn't matter what our big N is. So for any little n bigger than big N, if we look at Fn of 0, we're claiming in this case that the limit is 0, so minus 0. We just get 0 minus 0. That's equal to 0, and that's less than epsilon. And the proof is done in the case when x is equal to 0. If x is equal to 1, in this case, f sub n of 1, well, that's 1 to the n, which is 1. And so as before, we claimed our limit was 1. So this whole process here is going to repeat itself. So again, we can take any positive integer. So take any. n instead of positive integers, then for any little n bigger than capital N, we look at the difference between f sub n of 1 and 1, which is our limit. Well, we know f sub n of 1 is 1, so we get 1 minus 1, so that's 0, and that's less than epsilon, so the proof is done in the case when x is 1. Now the fun part. <laughs> if if x is between 0 and 1, this is the part that's kind of exciting, uh, we're going to choose a natural number n that is larger than the natural log of epsilon over the natural log of x. Right? You can use the Archimedean property to do that. Okay. Then, for any little n bigger than capital N, we're going to look at the difference, right? The difference between f sub n of x and 0, because our limit is going to be 0 in this case. So we look at f sub n of x minus 0. Well, that's x to the n minus 0. That's the absolute value of x to the n. And we know we can drop the absolute value because x is between 0 and 1, so that's just x to the n. Now we're totally going to formalize this. So since little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than ln epsilon over ln x, that means we have, let me just restate it, we have little n bigger than ln epsilon over ln x. And let's solve for x so we can really like make the proof concrete. So if you multiply both sides by the natural log of x, 
you reverse the inequality sign. Again, the natural log of x is negative in this case, because recall this green region, that's where um, that's the x, that's where x resides, so the natural log is a negative number. So we get n natural log of x. Then we flip the sign, so that's less than natural log of epsilon. And we're solving for x, so now we'll divide by n. So we have ln x less than ln epsilon over n. And now to solve for x here, um, we can use the fact that ln x and e to the x are inverse functions, or you can take a more algebraic approach and you can exponentiate both sides so that these actually cancel. So you get that x is less than e to the natural log of epsilon over n. All right, let's finish our proof. So thus, just let's restate this, the difference between f sub n of x and 0, we said that was equal to x to the n. All right, that's equal to x to the n. And this is less than, well, x is less than this guy here. So I'm just going to replace x with that. So it's e to the natural log of epsilon over n. And the whole thing is to the nth power, right? Just replacing x with what's in parentheses using this. And then what you do here is use properties of exponents, right? The n's will cancel. So you'll get e to the natural log of epsilon. And then these cancel e and the natural log of x because they're inverse functions, and so you get epsilon. And that completes the proof. So a bit of work. Wow, this video is almost 12 minutes long. Oh my god, all right. Um, so long problem. I hope this helped. Uh, just to finish really quickly. So in general, we had, just to recap, we had our, our sequence was this and we showed it converge pointwise, and the function it converged to was, let's see, ooh, don't want to mess up now for 12 minutes. Um, so it converges to zero <laughs> if x is zero or if it's less than one, and it converges to one uh, if uh, x is, um, mm, yeah, if x is one. Yeah, if x is one. Converges to one if x is one. It got a little lost there. <clears throat> And so this is the pointwise limit of this sequence of functions. The convergence is not uniform, right? Because this is a sequence of continuous functions. If the convergence was uniform, then the limit should also be continuous. But it's clear this function is not continuous, right? It's got to jump. So again, whenever you have a sequence of continuous functions and the convergence is uniform, the limit is also uh, continuous. And this, this just did not work in this case. So it's only pointwise convergence uh, on this on this interval. So that's it.